This uh, message is coming to you from the Legal Resources Committee of N the Naples Area Board of Realtors. We're here this morning on October 6th to talk to you a little bit about the impact that Ian has had on our community and how it will affect your relationship with your customers. I'm uh, proud, the chair of the Legal Resources Committee. I'm proud to be joined by Attorney Sam Saad, who's our vice chair. And we're going to try to discuss the broker and, and uh, legal aspects of of what's happening after the uh, passage of, of Hurricane Ian. So Sam, I guess the first thing we'd like to do is to make sure that uh, you reach out to your customer, whether they're local or whether they're uh, uh, located remotely, and just let them know that you're here for them and that you're going to try to help them through the process. Um, it's important to reach out and make those touches so they're not sitting somewhere wondering, you know, what, what, what's going on. So I think that's yeah, an important Yeah, I think that's thing. very important that, that Reach out to your customer, let them know that you're here and you're available. Um, if they have questions about either their contractual rights or what's happened to their property, it's very important as a realtor to be the source of the source, get them to their closing attorney. Um, regretfully, title companies are not gonna be a lot of help right now. They're gonna need an attorney to interpret the risk of loss provisions of the contract. They're probably gonna need an inspector if there's a loan you need to get with the lender and get the appraiser back out there to assess the property or whoever the whoever the lender is going to use. Um, you have timelines in the contract that need to be complied with. The, the force majeure event has passed, so uh, the contracts are all back in force and kicking, and we need to move quickly to secure our properties, be in contact with our customers. I think the most important thing at this point though is just reassure them that you are here for them and providing them service. Um, I've spoken to many closing uh, attorneys in town. We are all here for you, the realtors, to get you through this process with your customers. And I think that the most important thing at this point is to be in contact and to communicate as best that you can um, about the properties that you've got listed or under contract. And Sam, I think the message we want to get out to you is let's try to keep these deals together. There's a lot of details going on, yeah. a lot of contractual issues, but um, if, if, you, if you, you're patient and you, and you are the source of the source uh, for information to your customers, uh, let's try to keep these deals together. In, in the event of severe damage, that's a different story, but uh, the majority of these deals can be kept together by being calm and patient and providing your customer with, with the information that they need. Yeah, I think that it's very important to remember, you know, five years ago we did this. We have some experience now, unfortunately. It's not experience that anybody wants to have, but we, as the Legal Resources Committee, kind of know what we're doing and can help you. Um, but through IRMA, we were able to keep most of the deals together. IRMA was a very different storm than Ian. Uh, especially for those that work on the Gulf Coast, um, close to the water. Uh, the storm surge was very different than the wind damage from, from Irma, and we're going to have to work through some different issues. Uh, things to be very cautious about at this point, you're not an inspector, you're a realtor, a sales associate, a broker associate, or a broker, and you need to be the source of the source. You need to be calling your inspectors, getting them out to your properties if people need it um, and helping as the realtor in that role. So we don't recommend you go to the customers of uh, the residents uh, and take pictures and start communicating about what's happened in that community or with that residence because that could expose you to a lot of liability. Those, it, it, it takes a professional inspector to determine the extent of damage and you can, you, in your um, wanting to help people and you're, you're anticipating trying to be help, you could create some liability for, your, for you. Yeah, your the, like I said, it's the water damage, especially along the coast and even inland in a lot of places because the, um, <laughs> 75 okay. flooded, so yeah. the water was everywhere. And a lot of properties got, you know, there's the potential for mold growth, so you may need mold inspections. There's going to be structural damage if you were on the if you're trying to sell um, a condominium along Gulf Shore Boulevard or, or or anywhere along the coast. 
You're going to see possible structural issues that have to be dealt with. I can speak to one example at the Billows on Gulf Shore Boulevard North. They washed the sand washed out from underneath the concrete slab and I'm not an engineer. I don't know if they can repack the sand or they have to tear the building down, but I do know that I'm going to call an engineer for my customer, my client, and uh, you should be calling one for your customer if you're in that situation. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to mention was be aware of the type of community that your customer lives in and be aware of the limitations well, that your contract has. If you're in a condominium community, obviously your customer is responsible for their unit, but damage to other areas of the common elements and everything, and like if you're on the fourth floor, you could have a perfectly intact unit, but your lobby could be flooded or, or, or you right. could have had uh, seawall damage. Those are things that are going to be part of the condominium's recovery process mm -hmm. and could involve an assessment for your customer but they don't directly affect the, con the contract between the buyer and the seller. That's right, so if you've got a unit, a condominium unit, and it's not damaged after it's been inspected by a professional and they determine that it was, you know, the, it's safe, but the common elements had damage, even in an HOA, the gate was damaged, the landscaping was damaged, the clubhouse was damaged. I mean, Benita Bay, if anybody sells in there knows the clubhouse was destroyed, but some of the condos are fine and uh, your contract defines the unit as the condominium. So a lot of buyers may be saying, well, the, the, the damage was so catastrophic to the association that I, I'm not gonna purchase this property. Well, your buyers need to understand that they're gonna lose their deposits. And um, that's never something that we wanna see happen. So. Keeping, keeping the deal together, I think, is the most important. The NABOR contract is designed to keep the deal together. Uh, it's very hard to get out of the contract. Um, but it's just, it's just very important that we all work together through this process, through this situation, and I think we'll all come out better at the end. So, Sam, let's uh, first talk, before we go into the specifics of each contract, what have you done now? You've had, a, you've had an event and there's in the contracts are some delays that say if, you, if, you, if closing services aren't available, internet's not available, sales not available, the buildings are not available, that the uh, buyer can delay the closing date up to uh, a, a In the neighbor contract, it's 30 days is the maximum that we can delay the contract. Um, once essential services are restored, you have uh, five days once the services are restored or insurance is available to get uh, your insurance bound and close, to get your um, inspection done and close. So it's a tight timeline. If it can't be done, work with the other side. That's, I'm going to keep saying that. Work with the other side. Let's get these deals closed. People wanted to buy. Unless there's absolute destruction and catastrophic damage, we need to get through the fear and get to closing. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with all parties agreeing to an extension, correct? I mean, absolutely. And remember that in contract, two parties can get together. We can do a contract amendment. We can extend the deadlines if we need to. And if we have to, we can always agree to a termination. The other thing that is very different between the two contracts is what is the seller's responsibility. In the NABOR contract, the seller is solely responsible uh, to restore the property and to maintain insurance uh, during the entire, entire process with the caveat that landscape damage is limited to 1% of the, of the purchase price. For our bar... It's also limited to what is available. So Correct. Like, okay. it, it's, it's 1%, but if you can't replace that Royal Palm, that's $50,000 because it's, there aren't Royal Palms available to purchase, then you, don't, you wouldn't be obligated to replace the tree. You would just have to be responsible for the 1%. So also in the NABOR contract, um, as Sam mentioned, it's, it's designed to keep the deal together and it's designed to have the seller responsible for restoring the property to its condition prior to the event. Um, the only way really that you can consider 
uh, terminating by contract is if the property is uninsurable or uninhabitable and yeah. you can make that call within five days of, of, the, of the notification. So the insurer um, would say, I can't insure this property anymore, or a government official would say, this property is not habitable. Correct. Is that correct? Yep. So if either of those two things happen, then either party is able to cancel. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the far bar side. Sam, do you want to talk a little bit about force majeure so, and how it affects the contract? Sure. Far bar contains a specific force majeure clause that limits the seller's damages. To, I'm sorry. The force majeure clause gives up to seven days after the force majeure event is passed and the services are available to complete the contract not to exceed 30 days. Farbar also contains a different risk of loss provision from NABOR that limits the seller's uh, downside damage to 1.5% of the purchase price. And this is not a blank in the contract, this is a hard and fast number. So if damages exceed 1.5%, the buyer can either get a 1.5% credit and take the property as is, or the buyer can terminate. Interestingly enough, in the Farbar contract, the seller does not have a right to terminate under risk of loss. The seller has to maintain the property and provide up to 1.5% of uh, Co repair costs or give the full 1.5% credit. Um, it's... Uh, so re the thing to remember here in reality is 1.5% is not a lot of money uh, when you're facing flood damage or mold Correct. restoration. However, that doesn't mean that you can't keep the deal together. If, if, if it's something that can be resolved relatively easily, the seller still wants to sell, the buyer still wants to buy, let's try to keep the deal together. The 1.5% the is a fairly low threshold, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the contract's going to be terminated. That's right. You can always work through the issues um, with the other side, if you if you run into an absolute obstinate party who doesn't want to comply with the contract, you need to contact an attorney and, again, not be providing legal advice. Um, if you can negotiate with the other agent uh, to, get, to get some results that are satisfactory to both parties, again, get with your favorite closing attorney, get it written up in an amendment. Um, I will say, given the nature of the damage and what the issues that we're seeing come through my office already uh, with insurance and assignments of benefits and damage and who's responsible and who's going to pay for it post-closing and special assessments, you, you need to be in contact with uh, your closing attorney as quickly as possible as well. And I think that also be aware and be in relationship with your customer that there's going to be a lot of fast talking people out there that are going to offer to tarp your roof or fix your roof yeah. and i had one the other day it was like here's the cost to tarp your roof please sign this assignment of benefits and 60 percent of the proceeds will go to the to the per the attorney was assigned to and i said stay away from that yeah. kind of stuff and also stay away from um just getting one estimate, maybe you need two estimates. We had one yesterday on your call where they got an estimate of $20,000 to replace the pool cage and then they got another estimate of $50,000. Right. So I think it's important that there's probably going to be a lot of opportunists out there. So when you're looking for assessments on damages, try to get more than one estimate to make sure that you're doing the right thing for your, for your seller and your buyer. Yeah, the, um, again, being the source of the source, Work your networks, get get the estimates in, and don't give estimates. <laughs> right. Because I've already seen that. Uh, you know, and it, the hurricane has been a couple of days past already, and certain realtors are out there saying there's no damage to the property. Don't do that. Yeah, I think that what we want to give you today is the idea of stay calm, consult an attorney, an inspection professional, consult the lender, Try to keep all aspects of the deal stable until you get the bottom line and try to keep your customers as calm as possible. Yeah. And, um, you know, you're welcome to call uh, me as a broker or Sam as an attorney. If you have questions, we'll try to help you. But uh, be the source of the source and be calm and um, try to help your customers uh, stay together and the deal st stay together. As we say in my office, stay calm and close on. Ha <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you all. Uh, we'll, we will have, an, uh, I believe we have a uh, Zoom call scheduled for uh, Monday uh, to go into these details and you're welcome to, uh, that'll be, the link will be out today and you're welcome to sign into that and uh, uh, we'll be glad to take your questions and try to help you in any way we can. Well, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for your time today. We hope we've given you some uh, great information. Uh, stay calm, uh, stay, stay focused, use professionals to help your customers and uh, that's our message from the Legal Resources Committee today. Um, please let us know if there's any way we can help you. Good day. Thank you.